वेलकम विल स्टार्ट विद द योजना डिसम्बर एडिशन दिस टॉक्स अबाउट कंज्यूमर अवेयरनेस एंड दिस वॉज अ काइंड ऑफ स्पेशल एडिशन सो इट्स इम्पॉर्टेंट दिस टॉपिक इज इम्पॉर्टेंट हाउ एवर यू डो नॉट सी अ लॉट ऑफ क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम योर प्रिलिम्स परस्पेक्टिव बट डेफिनेटली द अपकमिंग बिल फॉर द कंज्यूमर प्रोटेक्शन इज इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर योर मीन्स एज वेल नाउ कमिंग ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट एडिशन दैट वुड फोकस ऑन द बैंकिंग रिफॉर्म्स दैट्स इन डीड वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर योर प्रिलिम्स एज वेल एज मीन्स नाउ द बेसिक आइडिया फॉर कंज्यूमर प्रोटेक्शन इज कंज्यूमर इज अ किंग सो वॉट एवर कंज्यूमर वॉन्ट्स फॉर अर लुक्स फॉर शुड बी फुलफिल्ड either in the private or the public sector. So that is the key idea behind it. Right now what happens is there are lots of cases where the con consumer is either cheated or there are cases where consumer is threatened for example there are uh, bills that are signed by the consumers in the hospitals and the hospital staff finally threatens saying that you have already given your uh, consent on the form that you have signed in and the language is so tricky that the consumer is unable to understand or comprehend it now the issue of consumer rights and consumer protection is not new it can be dated back to late 2005 years ago when in the period of quarterly you had the consumer awareness that was very very important to keep this in mind and considering these facts you have numerous standards that have come up for example the isi mark we talk about the isi mark further in this class for jewelry it's hallmark for silk it's silk mark for agriculture produces it's egg mark similarly for real estates it's the recent rera and this rera is again very important for your prelims as well as your mains so as you know we have put up the symbols the the topics which are important for your objectives and the topics that are important for your subjective papers now consumer redressal and consumer redressal authority is again very very important so why do we need to protect the consumer consumer is protected because we are trying to promote a good governance we are trying to protect our culture and we are trying to protect the uh, basic rights of an individual so bringing in more awareness bringing in consumer education is one of the ways we can protect the consumers so under the consumer protection act 1986 you have six basic rights that are laid down these six basic rights are important so sometimes there could be a direct question which of the following is not a basic right so you must know these so these are safety information choose the right to be heard right to redressal and right to education now for this you have a three tier redressal mechanism so you have the district court district forum followed by the state forum and followed by the national forum now on the national forum you have a retired judge of supreme court in the state forum you have the retired judge of high court and in the district forum you have the officer of to the range of district court so the idea is to provide a speedy grievance redressal if the course is uh, if the case is not sorted out at the district level it moves on to the state level and finally can move on to the national level now education gives a balance of power between the producer and the consumer so once the person is educated he can make cogent choices or can have an idea or a kind of visualization as to what could be the protection from the uh, illegal or mal practices that exist so jago grahak jago is a kind of campaign that is launched to promote consumer awareness among the people similarly in the cases of food you have the food safety and standard standards authority of india which is known as fss ai in the financial sectors you have rbi similarly in the medicines you have national pharmaceutical pricing authority nppa that gives a list of the essential drugs and make sure that the essential drugs are available at a normal price and they are not overpriced so these all campaigns be it the campaign for medicines be it the campaign for anything or any consumer awareness uh, issue these are uh, these campaigns go through the director directorate of audio and visual publicity which is known as DAVP that's very very important and you can see big hoardings big pamphlets in fairs and festivals across the road and all those are an initiative by DAVP so all the commercial developments you see are aimed to promote the consumer awareness 
Now again, there are numerous cases of misleading advertisement. So that's again something that is being looked under consumer protection. So sometimes there is a misleading advertisement. As a result, people purchase that product and finally realize that they were misled. So to protect consumer against those is again a very, very important issue. So what happened is recently you had the Consumer Protection Bill of 2015 and Bureau of Indian Standards, that's BIS, Act 2016 that was released which had certain features. Now this is to be due in the next session of the parliament, in the winter session of the parliament. Now what are the ideas under this bill? So the ideas is the exclusive agency should be established and that is known as the Central Consumer Protection Authority. This would protect the rights of the consumers. There is the provision for product liability that has been released, alternate dispute redressal which we call as ADR. So ADR means out of court settlement. So all the resolutions can be sorted out without going to the court. So consumer court however does not require a lawyer. A person can approach to the consumer court directly and uh, the fees is very nominal. However, ADR is a process further simplifying it without going to the court as well. So what is the provision for mediation as an ADR mechanism? Talking about the unfair terms of contract uh, as null and void. So that's again very important issue that has been brought up. Adjudication process to be simplified. That's very, very important issue that has been talked about. So the idea is to increase the minimum number of members in the consumer uh, for a kind of uh, speedy uh, disposal of the problem. So quick resolution of the problem uh, with less time, more transparency, more accountability is the key idea here. Now next is some of the major standards that we talk about. So standards of weights and measures act 1956. This was the first act based on the metric system and it was recognized by the International Organization of Legal Metrology. So that's important. Now these are something that's objective and you must know those. You can support your answers with these facts. So this is something you must memorize and know. The next is Legal Metrologic, Metrology Act 2009. So it repealed the previous act of weights and measures, uh, the one given in 56, the later amended in 76 and finally in 85. The idea is to share an equal responsibility between the state and the centre government and establish precision laboratories. The next is there are main, many regional offices, regional laboratories that have been established. Initially it was at Ahmedabad, Bhubaneswar, Bangalore and Faridabad, later expanded to Gohati, Nagpur and Varanasi. Now you also have a consumer helpline. So you have the consumer helpline number that is given here. Many of the people can get guidance and the consumers can be empowered using the consumer national, uh, sorry, national consumer helpline. It has partnered with nearly 325 companies across India. Some other important platforms are Ingram. Now the abbreviation is important for these. So it's integrated grievance redressal mechanism. So once you launch a larger grievance, the redressal mechanism, how quick it is. So usually you say uh, within three days you would reach, uh, receive a reply and within 30 days the problem would be resolved. So that's the kind of efficiency government is trying to provide for the uh, grievance redressal mechanism. And private companies, all the private companies would be brought onto a single platform. Similarly, you have the helpline for the state. So we have a national consumer helpline. We have helplines at a state level. You have smart computer applications, those are mobile applications for consumer awareness. Next is Gamma, again important that we already talked about. So it's grievance against misleading advertisements. Finally, you have the online dispute resolution and the online consumer mediation center, which has been established at the law school in Bangalore. So all those are some of the important campaign, uh, important efforts done for consumer awareness. Now. Before the independence, there were some of the acts that talked about consumer protection. These are very, very important because after the independence, you had numerous acts and we will have a list of those. We won't read those. You can have those uh, at the current affairs section on the exam race website. You can refer those and memorize some of those. But these are really important because these are pre-independence. So pre-independence, there were not more. So three of those, very, very important. Sale of goods, uh, sale of goods act. 
1930 agricultural produce grading and marketing 1837 and drugs and cosmetics act 1940 now what when we talk about consumer protection in india let's talk about how it started so it is started in 1960s from united states so ralph nader championed the cause for the manufacturers and it was john f kennedy the president of america who in 1962 laid down four basic rights those were right to safety right to be informed right to choose and right to be heard and in our consumer protection act we have given the sixth right uh, which one of which includes education as well 15th march is celebrated as the world consumer rights day and un also adopted the guidelines for consumer protection and it brought about a strong movement in united states france germany sweden and norway as we said we have the list of major consumer protection laws in india so those would be available at the website you can refer those if we talk about the historical development we talked about how the idea for consumer protection developed then you had the establishment of the department of consumer affairs in 91 later on you had consumer welfare fund in 2003 you had the competition commission of india that was established fss ai for food inspection was established in 2006 then we talk about the recent proposal that's the ccpa that's the central consumer protection agent authority so why we require a agency like this the idea is because till now we have numerous laws which are disintegrated and we need a kind of umbrella body which could which could look after each of those so it was brought about in 1986 amended in 91 93 and 2002 and now we are talking about further amendments there now how can a consumer file a complaint so consumers who all can file first of all so consumers can file consumer associations can file central government state government more than one consumer one consumer or any legal representative of a deceased consumer can file a complaint now when we talk about consumer what does that include consumer include any person who is planning to buy who who has bought an item who is buying an item who is agreeing to buy an item or any of the services being availed for non commercial purpose so all that is included under the definition of the word consumer now how can we file or what is the basis to file a complaint when can i say i am being cheated or i should need to file a complaint so if there is any kind of mal practice unfair trade practice if the goods is defective if the delivery of service is not correct if there is a change in the price uh, in regards to the original price that was given or if there are any hazardous goods and services now how do we file we already said we had the district state and the national commission the cap is important so if it is a case up to 20 lakhs it could be filed in district forum up to 1 crore in the state commission and above 1 crore directly to the national commission and that's very very important so this is important for your prelims purpose so you must know the cap for all of these the next is how to file so you can have a written complaint even without an advocate you do not need to hire a lawyer and the fees for the consumer courts is very very small as compared to other courts now what could be the benefit that could be provided to the victim so the benefits could be the removal of the defect replacement of the defect refund of the amount compensation of the money compensation in lieu of the damage that is being caused withdraw any kind of hazardous goods and services that was talk talked about if it was a misleading advertisement the corrective rectifications of those advertisements would be done now talking about the justice delivery for low income consumers now un guidelines specifically focuses on the low income consumers or low income groups because it believes that those who have money can definitely go to the court and fight the case but those who belong to a low income group need some kind of support and therefore the guidelines that are coming up in the 2015 bill that has been laid forward talks about a much more fair inexpensive accessible and efficient dispute resolution system so another highlight would be the adr alternate dispute redressal so under that you would have negotiation so it's directly between the two parties mediation is a kind of flexible process where a person interferes or mediates in between 
for a uh, immediate resolution of the problem collaborative law where both the parties are represented by the attorney and both the parties agree to the legislate uh, agree not to legislate then you have arbitration arbitration is a uh, kind of there is a neutral arbitrator who renders a decision and that is being accepted by the parties then you have conciliation conciliation is a neutral third party that communicates with the two parties to lead out to a kind of resolution between the two parties the next is legal services authorities act 1987 now this was operational through the notification that was laid down in the year 1995 so nearly 7 years after it was laid down and uh, lok adalat consisted of the retired judicial officers in this you had section 89 that talked about out of court settlement that is the adr settlement and this was held mandatory under the salem advocates bar association versus union of india case now these cases are very very important for your polity and ir section so make sure you cover those case studies carefully now adr was mandatory in the fcons infrastructure versus the cheranya vanke construction case similarly there was a medical negligence case that was finalized 23 years down the lane and vijay singh roy uh, versus vishwanath das was the case that talked about this at the global level you have numerous consumer groups and you have consumer international that's federation of 250 uh, consumer group associations with un and under that 2018 was declared as uh, a year of e-commerce with the theme better digital world similarly in uk so far when we talk about consumer protection we include two terms goods and services 2015 amendment in uk talked about a new term that was digital content so digital content is now under the ambit of uh, consumer rights in united nations uh, sorry uh, united kingdom uk again uh online dispute redressal has been important now how technology has been helping through with the technology you have numerous uh, developments that have been seen so more of digital transactions more of mobile transaction easier use of upi bhim that we have already talked about but still 40% of the population is the total population that has an access to internet across the world so definitely this is a kind of very small fraction and it there is way to go much more beyond this so the idea is to bring a more consumer centric approach so that people can have more awareness and through digital education the idea of consumer education or consumer awareness could be spread at a faster pace now consumer inclusion and financial services so un guidelines of 2015 first time included financial services as the keyword for fair treatment and uh, to check out any kinds of frauds that exist so this is very very important in 2015 it was for the first time that the word financial services was included now what happened was there was global economic crisis then you had the impact of oecds on g20 economy and as a result you had the financial consumer protection of 2011 that was released and it brought in consumer confidence and trust in the market so if we look on to the market scenario banks alone control 64% of the total assets and you have a banking ambassador that is being appointed by the rbi in each state now we also talk about how old gives way to the new so previously there was no much digital transactions digital issues that were talked about but now we are uh, talking more about cyber issues digital crimes we are talking about identity theft atm card skimming we are talking about credit card cloning so all these are newer issues that are coming up in the consumer courts so all these needs to be addressed and definitely if you are addressing if your uh, area is increasing you have to reduce the cost substantially so bringing or getting consumer courts more inexpensive is the key idea behind it in 2013 indian institute of public administration released a report and based on that report uh, it said that 10.2% of the complaints are decided in 3 months but still 17.8% complaints take around 5 months so that's a huge time and we need to do a kind of speedy resolution for the problems so we need to reduce the time that has been taken up and nearly 40% of the uh, district consumer forums 
with have less than 15 cases which are filed per month so what is there is there is in equal distribution of the cases across the various courts so that's again something that must be looked out and all the all the consumer courts must must have a kind of equal distribution of the cases that must be seen the next is consumers as co-protectors in the health services. Now, we talk about one important term which is information asymmetry. Information asymmetry means there are two parties A and B. A has much higher amount of information as compared to B. Since B does not know much, B can be cheated anytime. Or since A knows more, he can take a benefit out of that. So, to provide a kind of equal balance between the two, there should be uh, kind of equal information that should be percolated and this information asymmetry can lead to market failures. So removing the kind of information asymmetry that exists in the market is very very important. Now health services have been important because in health we talk about two important terms health education and health literacy. So health education we talk about all the learning experiences that help the community to improve the health. However, under health literacy, we don't only talk about uh, checking out the pamphlets, scheduling an online appointment with the doctors, but we talk about developing social skills which, in, which can help individual to gain access to the information for good health. So those are two different terms that we focus on. Similarly, you have the NABH providers that those are the providers by the National Accreditation Board of Hospitals and Healthcare. And these gives accreditation to the various healthcare facilities in India. So that's again important. Similarly, we talked about the base price for the essential medicines. So it should be regulated. So all those are the approaches under the uh, health services. And finally, we are talking about a proposal for universal health coverage for all. So those are some of the important things to consider. Similarly, when we talk about GST and its impact on the consumer, GST, however, people have put up many rumors regarding GST, but GST has no doubt changed the life of many and you have numerous developments that could be seen. The tax structure is much more simplified since it's a kind of destination based tax. All the states would have a kind of equitable distribution uh, that would be seen. Many of the cases, the rates have do, uh, gone down. So, for example, cab booking, the rate has been uh, reduced from 6% to 5%, airlines from 12% to 5%, except for the business class. So, all those are some of the rates given here that have been reduced under GST regime. And under GST, we also talk about non-profiteering. Non-profiteering, we have already discussed in our class on GST, is very, very important. This was one of the recent brochures that has been released. So, make sure you go through that. You have this in the handouts. The next is educating the rural customers. Now, when we talk about rural India, we have nearly 70% of the people who reside into the rural areas, but the income level have been increasing in the rural areas and the per capita income has increased by 17% in two financial years. So, more of the people are spending now on food items. So, the spending on the food items have increased from 40% to more than 50%. Again, rural areas account for half of the economy. You have more services that are going into the rural sector. You have electricity, you have banks, you have uh, various businesses, corporate houses that are entering into rural market. We are also talking about rural tourism as we have seen in the previous um, issue of uh, Kurukshetra December. So all those are some of the issues that are being brought into the rural area. So rural areas and the development of rural areas is indeed important. The next is EGMARC. We already talked about the quality of the agricultural produce being determined by EGMARC. Similarly, you have DD Kisan that was the Doolishan channel for the farmers started in 2015. The 1986, the Consumer Protection Act had an amendment for prevention of food adulteration. This is again very, very important because there are authorized citizens who can become food inspectors and participate in food security, uh, food safety. Then you have PMG Disha, that's Prime Minister Grameen Digital Sakshata Abhiyan for digital literacy to, uh, to be provided to 6 crore rural house, households by March 2019. Similarly, you have National Digital Literacy Mission that is being implemented by three uh, uh, companies basically so you have nascom intel and hp so it's important who all have supported the national digital literacy mission the next important very important topic 
uh, ISI. Now, Indian Standards Institution was registered under the Society's Registration Act as National Standard Body of India. It prepares and promotes the various standards to be adopted by the Indian industry. Later, it was expanded to include product certification. Under product certification, we talk about third party guarantee of quality, safety and reliability. Now, BIS also certified the drillers. So, you have some jewellers who can do hallmarking and this was uh, provided by recognition of essaying and hallmarking center and is done under IS code. So, again a very important app is CARE. This app has been launched by BSI, uh, sorry BIS and its idea is to uh, lodge any complaint against the ISI product or a hallmark product. So, that's again an important mobile app that's important for you to remember. The next is consumer satisfaction. So, consumer satisfaction you have uh, RBI that framed the charter of consumer rights and finally you have the model consumer rights policy that was laid down. Under the model consumer rights policy you had four important issues. First was fair treatment. So, there should be a fair relationship between bank and the customer. There should be more transparency. There should be uh, more privacy, so the cons consumer information should be kept confidential. There should be suitability for the consumers and finally right to grievance redressal and compensation that's very very important as of now. So similarly government has launched the PG portal that talks about the grievance redressal. The next is classifying the complaints. So when we classify the complaints we have uh, the various laws that talk about it. So what kind of complaints could be there? First is the complaints that talk about violating a regulatory law. The next is complaints related to internal bank policy or the customer service issues. So we broadly classify complaints in the banking areas under three heads. So what we do is first we classify the complaints, we then analyze the trend, take the management action and try to improve the complaint process. So we try to provide best services to the customer and resolve the issue so that future customers do not face the same problem. The next is the concept of Bharat Mala Pariyojana that was important and discussed here. Now Bharat Mala Pariyojana talks about OD that's original uh, sorry origin and destination. So we would be talking uh, about Bharat Mala Pariyojana in our next class on GS in one or two days. So make sure you refer that that's very very important for your mains. Now Bharat Mala Pariyojana the key issues are we are moving from 6 national corridors to 50 national corridors. We are talking about only 40% freight that is being taken by roads as of now to be inclu uh, increased to nearly 60 to sorry 70 to 80 percent and we are talking about origin destination traffic that means we are not only talking about increasing the length of the roads improving the roads but we are assessing what kind and how much traffic is being seen in a particular corridor and based on that we are developing those corridors. So we have already covered the national highway development, the golden quadrilateral connecting the four metros, the north south, the east west corridor all those but under Bharat Mala Pariyojana we talk about project selection which is done based on the traffic, based on the segment specific traffic density then we talk about the execution and the financing issues. So we have higher push towards PPP, public private partnership. Then we talk about acquiring land and getting um, uh, the environmental clearances and a kind of bolder vision for the same. So we have 8 lakh crores that has been scheduled for the highway works before 2018. And under this umbrella program of Bharat Mala Pariyojana, you would have all the further schemes that would be incorporated. We already talked about some of the key highlights and the important idea is to improve the logistics performance index here. So we have identified nearly 26,200 kilometers of economic corridor of which heavy freight would be 9,000. Then you would have 8,000 of inter corridors, 7,500 kilometers of feeder uh, corridor. We would also focus on border roads, international connectivity, port roads and coastal roads. So all those would be part of this. So not only the roads within the nation but the roads on the uh, international boundaries, the border areas and the coastal areas are important for this. The next is Invest India. Invest India is a kind of model that talks about professional support for people to invest more in India. So we are looking forward for more FDI investments in India and this body has nearly 110 team members who talk about 
the management uh, sorry the investment in india and have people from various management consultants and e investments from the banking sector the this body the invest india was winner at the united investment promotion awards in 2016 we also talk about integrated medi cities so we are bringing about 11 integrated medi cities in the 11 states in india and this is a kind of indo uk institute of health collaboration then you have vestas which has come up in the state of gujarat and it is manufacturing the blades for the wind turbines turbines and this growth has been registered Uh, the fastest in the firm's history and it is said to beat the record of china similarly you have nearly 1 lakh uh, answers that have been given to the queries from the various investors which are covering nearly 47 sectors and various nations across the world now some of the other important topics that have been covered in this is this month's yojana so largest ever survey was conducted this was known as national achievement survey for nearly 25 lakh students for class 3 5 and 8 the idea was to find out the learning outcomes which have been developed by ncert then you have msme samadhan that's the micro small and medium enterprises this is a kind of uh, portal that talks about resolution for the delayed payments so all the payments that have been delayed would be brought under monitored under the msme samadhan the next is recently prime minister addressed the international conference on consumer protection some of the key ideas from there india is among the first nations first few nations to enact the consumer protection act first time after the un guidelines were adopted in 1985 then you had the protection of consumer interest we have recently talked about rera for real estate gst uh, the national consumer helpline has become more uh, the capacity for that has been increased four times we are talking about affordable medicines to poor by bhartiya jan aushadhi pariyojana monetary savings by ujala yojana so you have low cost of led and low cost low electricity bill cost and upi to boost the e-commerce then we talk about water audit so water audit and a water audit we talk about the global issue of water shortage that is being faced by most of the nations across the globe and there is a kind of mismatch between the demand and the supply by which is said to increase to 40% above 40% by 2030 so minimizing the losses optimizing the use and enabling more conservation of water so for that we use or we have an idea of 3r that's reduce reuse and recycle some of the major steps involved is the process study the quality of water the systems audit talking about the various discharge analysis and so on the next is npp national power portal that's a centralized platform for inter, uh, indian power sector now you have various power apps that have come up these are very very important you must know the names for the same and finally you have this npp has been integrated with central electricity authority the power finance corporation and rural electrification electrification corporation so sometimes you have a direct question which of the following uh, has not been uh, integrated with npp so you must be able to know all the major bodies which are integrated with npp similarly we talk about the interstate disease burden report so there has been a disparity that has been seen in the areas of Uh, communicable diseases as well as non communicable diseases so certain areas have high prevalence for communicable diseases like bihar odisha up rajasthan mp assam and jharkhand while the other states have more percentage of non communicable diseases that has been seen and this burden report is a initiative of icmr public health foundation of india and institute of health metrics and evaluation so again the various bodies are important sometimes there are direct questions specifically for your objective papers for the northeast the first air dispensary is to be set up and this would be a helicopter based dispensary especially to cater the problems in the northeast where the terrain is not smooth and you have to airlift the patients to the hospital Uh, the department of northeast region has contributed nearly 25 crores as a part of this project then you have three mega food parks that are coming up in assam tripura and mizoram and you have uh, this destination northeast which is being emerged uh, which is an upcoming destination for various startups regarding jammu you have a tourist spot at suchetgarh in jammu 
We are talking about a small hydropower project in Biraz Dras in the Kargil area and this is the first project under the Ladakh Renewable Initi Energy Initiative. Again very very important. You have two trains that have started between India and Bangladesh. The first that was started in 2008 as Maitri Express between Kolkata and Dhaka and in 2017 we have Bandhan Express between Kolkata and Kulna and this would be on a weekly service with end-to-end -end immigration that would be possible. We have also helped uh, Bangladesh build two of the bridges that is Bhairira Bridge on Meghna River and Titas Bridge on Titas River uh, and this has been possible with the assistance of Government of India. So these were some of the major highlights that we have covered for Yojana December. We will be covering the Yojana for the January month as well as the Kurukshetra. Once you are subscribed you would have the updates and the notifications coming up. So stay tuned for further classes. Have a very good day ahead.